Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here. We've got another machine, another beige monster. This is a fun little build. I, I've had this case for a little while. You know, cases come and go, but I was keeping this one. I'm not sure why I was keeping it, if I wanted to do a build with it or not. But anyways, I decided to put a, a machine together, a, a basic Windows 10 machine. But I, I love this old style, you know, dial front end that doesn't actually do anything, but it's got the power button and your LEDs and a reset button and USB ports and stuff on it. You can see this is an older machine because it had a floppy drive, which isn't connected, but you know, it was in there. <laughs> um, flip around to the back. Let me, uh, let me move, move this around here. Take a look at the back of the system. It's a little bit interesting in terms of, uh, in terms of how we've had to do some stuff here. So um, power supply, we've got a keyboard port and then we've got USB ports. So you can see this is not too old a machine because it doesn't have two PS2 ports. This is uh, in the period of time where they started putting keyboard ports back on to motherboards for gamers. Gamers. Uh, some more USB ports, audio ports, and then we've got some things that are covered up by some tape. And the reason why is because, one, I covered up the video ports so that whoever gets this knows to plug into the GPU. <laughs> and I covered up the ethernet port that was on this motherboard because the ethernet port on this motherboard is toast. It is borked. It does not work anymore. So I actually had to install a separate ethernet card onto uh, the system on an expansion slot. So what I will do now is put this down flat and we'll get the panel off and we'll take a little top down view and see what we've got going on inside from a hardware components perspective. Top-down view. Um, I had to take the graphics card out uh, to be able to remember. Uh, well, I couldn't remember what the motherboard was, so I had to take the card off so I could see it. So this is an Asus M4A785-M, and this is a uh, AMD uh, 3 AM3 and AM2. I think it does both supported um, board. It's only DDR2 memory. But there are four DIMM slots, so I was able to put four 1 gig DIMMs in here. Uh, so we have four gig of RAM. And then we've got this very low end uh, Radeon HD 7350 PCIe graphics card. It's one gig. It's like terrible 3D performance. Like you can't, like this is, this is like beyond terrible 3D performance. But for desktop graphics, this is fully acceptable. Um, and we'll see that when we get the system up and running, uh, that we should be able to very easy handle some 720p graphic uh, capability there on YouTube, which is fine for a machine that's a little bit older like this. I'm gonna put the uh, stuff back on. As far as the rest of the components in the system, we'll take a look at which AMD processor is installed in this uh, once we get it booted up and take a look at our hardware info specs. Uh, but it, uh, it definitely, you know, is an AMD processor now. Uh, for the um, Ethernet card that I installed in here, this is a PCI Ethernet card. It's not PCIe, so again, it's not going to be the greatest, but I believe it is a 1 gig um, card. And uh, that is a D-Link, some D-Link random, D-Link rando uh, is what we, uh, what we ended up installing here. And then for our uh, DVD RAM drive, we've got hooked up, and that is via IDE. I could have used PCI, but I've got a lot of optical drives, and I figured, hey, we'll just throw one in here. Um, and then we've got the floppy disk drive, which there isn't a floppy disk connector on here, and I don't have any kinds of adapters or anything like that. Uh, from the drive, though, the hard drive, we do have a, um, is this a 500 gig? No. It's only 160 gig, but it is a SATA uh, hard disk drive that we have installed um, in the bottom here. So pretty decent. And then if you're interested, we got a Sparkle Power uh, power supply here. And this was a max voltage of 350, yeah, 350 watts. So not very big, but again, just for powering this basic setup, more than enough. I'm gonna get this set up now with the other components that are gonna to go together with this as a donation machine, and then we'll get booted up into Windows and take a look and see how things are gonna run. We have our fun and exciting, slightly mismatched setup here. We've got our tower machine, a, a basic USB 
Belkin Mouse, a um, no-name brand uh, <laughs> a PS2 keyboard here with some squishy keys and a nice place to put your pen. <laughs> and then we have this LG Flaptron L1710, so L17, L1710S. Yeah, there you go. I am ready to hit the power button and we will see what happens. Ah, yes, it does work. <laughs> All right, there's our boot up there. Got our motherboard splash screen. And then we will have Windows 10 getting itself up and running. Uh, yes, I'm still running Windows 10 on these older machines. I know that it's possible to trick a machine to run Windows 11, and from a performance perspective, it's virtually the same. But again, the same reason why I generally don't go with putting a Linux distribution on these machines, which obviously would run better than Windows 10, um, and, and give up-to-date security. Um, from a usability perspective, the people who are gonna be using these machines aren't gonna know how to, you know, configure and reconfigure and possibly have to reload the OS if it's not working properly. And from a stability perspective, uh, like it or not, Windows 10 from a, an, a, an, a PC perspective is the most stable operating system that you can get right now. Um, and yeah, by the time 2025 hits and it's no longer supported, I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do, but hopefully by then, um, the donation machines I'll be getting in 2025 will be much more up to date <laughs> than, uh, than some of these ones are. Um, and these ones will, you know, be ready to go to uh, their final retirement place. So, hey, we're up and running in Windows. How about we get the camera just a little bit closer to the screen and we'll take a look at those system specs in Hardware Info. The surprise is out. The processor installed in this is an AMD Phenom 8450. And this is a triple core processor. That's right. This is a three core, three thread processor. Uh, stepping is the DR-B3 Deerhound processor, codename Toleman. And uh, this is a uh, 1.8 gigahertz, I think, baseline. Oh no, 2.1 gigahertz baseline. And then I don't think we have any turbo on that one. So um, yeah, a three core processor. Uh, in the AMD Phenom range. So pretty cool. Um, I bet, you know, if you really wanted to get into have some fun with this, you could probably figure out how to do some overclock on here. Although, you know, with the power supply that this is using, eh, probably not the best. And of course, we've got a really low end graphics card with that uh, HD 7350. So it's not like this thing is going to be a gaming powerhouse or anything like that. If you were to go back and use this as like a Windows 7 machine. Uh, memory wise we've got those four uh, DDR2 memory dims uh, not going to give the best performance for gaming either obviously this doesn't have DDR3 memory yet and uh, from the storage perspective we've got the DVD RAM drive and then we've got that 160 gig um, SATA 3 hard drive yeah so that's our hardware specs let's get uh, a browser open and we'll take a look at how our graphics performance is running on this system. With these older uh, non-widescreen panels, this is a 1280 by 1024 screen. So the native HD resolution here is gonna be 720p and the performance of the system is probably best suited towards 720p. So this all makes sense. The space bar here and we'll get started. We'll take a look. I didn't plug speakers in, so we're not gonna have any sound here. Um, but we can very clearly see from a performance perspective, we've only dropped those 10 frames right at the beginning, which could just be the last part of the, you know, the, the queuing. Uh, there's no hitching I'm seeing at all. Very smooth performance. It doesn't look, you know, off to me, uh, which, you know, sometimes you can see there's some, you know, you don't see it in the frame drops that are coming here, but you can see visually that there's something not quite right. There's none of that issue here. It looks very good. So yeah, full, full streaming 720p, you know, standard HD capability, just right for this screen. No problem here for the system to be able to handle that, which means, you know, doing some very simple web conferencing or some online learning 
not going to be an issue to all uh, at all for whoever's going to be using this machine. So another good one put together, ready to donate. Thank you for staying tuned for another fun video sharing one of these donation machines. Um, I really appreciate the time that you take to uh, enjoy these. I really enjoy making these machines and donating them and I enjoy sharing them with you. So um, as always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy and we'll catch you in the next one.